One thing we're learning about Jeff Brom handing out a ton of offers over the past couple of months is that the wide receiver position is going to be a priority in the 2024 recruiting class. We're going to talk about that and more on today's episode of the Locked On the Louisville podcast. Stay tuned. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On, the Louisville podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open records with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your 2023 goals. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply as always want to thank you all for making us your first listen of the day just a reminder that the locked on the Louisville podcast is free on all streaming services five days a week your team every day as I mentioned in the opener it's been pretty evident that Louisville head football coach Jeff Brom and company are prioritizing the wide receiver position in the 2024 recruiting class we're going to talk about a new prospect to focus on that is um, North Carolina standout uh, Terrell Anderson, who just cut his least his list to ten, and the Cardinals were included in the list cut. We'll also talk about the Louisville men's basketball team's loss to Miami on the road, and we'll also talk about former Cardinal star Jordan Wara being traded to the Indiana Pacers. So we'll begin um, by talking a little football. Jeff Brom and company have been all over the country they've been extremely busy not only you know since taking over of addressing the needs um in 5l23 keeping that class together um hitting the transfer portal hard to fill out the team for next year but after that what have they done well they have immediately turned around and just gone to many different areas especially on the east coast but also missouri texas uh so on and so forth and have handed out a ton of offers in the 2024 class. Now, is this some unprecedented you know, level of activity? No, not by any stretch of the imagination. But I like drawing some takeaways from the patterns. And what we're seeing is that the Cardinals are offering a ton of wide receivers. Um, we just talked about uh, Jeremiah McClellan from the St. Louis area receiving a Louisville offer. Well... Um, a more recent thing to focus on is um, three-star receiver Terrell Anderson uh, from North Carolina, ranked as the 552nd best player in the country, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite. He just cut his list to 10. The Cardinals have been included in that list. Now, granted, it says on the Twitter post from Anderson that his recruitment is still open So you have to take everything with a grain of salt. But I I still do think that this is worth talking about because it's another prospect, um, you know, that could be on Louisville's radar. Uh, Included with Louisville in the top 10, Penn State, North Carolina, Tennessee, Auburn, um, Cincinnati, Virginia Tech, NC State, Michigan, and Central Florida. So very, very solid, um, you know, top 10. This past season, um, Anderson had, let's see, 70. 4.8 4.8 yards per game in terms of uh, receiving yards. Um, helped Grimsley to a 15-1 and record in the Greensboro area. Um, had 1,254 receiving yards and 11 receiving touchdowns. Also had three kickoffs returned for a touchdown, which was um, pretty incredible as well, considering that Anderson is uh, 6'3", 184 pounds. But... One thing that's very interesting here in this recruitment is he plays for Grimsley High School um, in the Greensboro, North Carolina area. There's been a lot of names talked about on this show over the past couple months. I don't expect you all to remember all of them, especially if you know they're just offers at this point. But the other big-time wide receiver that plays for Grimsley High School is none other than Alex Taylor. Taylor is a player that we talked about um, a couple weeks ago um, that the Louisville Cardinals offered. Um, You know, he is a guy that has 
you had contact with the Cardinals. Um, you'll contact with Mark Ivy. He's looking to make a decision probably in the summer. So this is a recruitment that the Cardinals need to get involved with. Um, if you're talking about Alex Taylor, but also you offer his high school teammates. So um, I would assume that this coaching staff has seen both of them play considering that they play for the same team, but Taylor is a top 250 player as opposed to Anderson being ranked just outside of the top 550. Um, has a ton of big-time offers. One thing that's interesting to me is the return touchdowns for kickoffs on special teams. When you watch Anderson play, um, he runs a 4-5-40, it's been claimed, which is pretty solid for his size, but is utilized as more of a a player that plays like Devontae Parker. I'm not saying that he is Devontae Parker whatsoever. I'm not going to compare every receiver over six foot three to Devontae Parker because that would be absolutely um, foolish of me. But he plays like Devontae Parker in, in the sense of he's utilized around the goal line a ton, um, has that athleticism for his size, uses that size to his advantage uh, with high pointing the football um, underrated route runner creates separation for his size and has that deceptive speed as well so I think that he's primarily more so a um, you know a guy that utilizes his size more so than his speed but don't let that fool you because he has deceptive speed as well um, a player that I think you know, might not necessarily be a guy that plays immediately at the college ranks, but I think that he could be utilized in certain situations, certain packages, especially in the red zone around the goal line with his ability to high point the football to win those one-on-one 50-50 jump balls. But um, I just think this is a very interesting recruitment considering that he's teammates with another high-profile receiver in the same class. So you wonder if that's going to make a difference, um, how much of a factor that will go into, you know, both recruitments, so on and so forth. But um, I think that, um, you know, Anderson is a player that you would see maybe not necessarily play right away at Louisville, but a guy that in year two, possibly year three, that um, is able to see his way onto the field significantly. Uh, and, and like I mentioned in the opener, the wide receiver position has been prioritized moving forward. We see it. We see all these offers handed out to wide receivers. Now, granted, sometimes that everything's just a formality, but I think that, um, you know, there's some truth into the patterns. I think that, you know, there's a good chance, you know, next season you're going to be without Jamari Thrash. Um, you know, you could look and see uh, guys like, I don't know, um, maybe – Amari Huggins Bruce goes to the NFL. You never know. Um, I, I think that depth is something to focus on, anyways. You know, there was talks of, of Louisville might look to add another receiver in the upcoming class, or um, you know, in a spot to where you are um, you know adding a player to play in this upcoming season. But hard to really convince players that have shown out at a previous stop to come in and compete for just snaps to get on the field. So. Um, I think, you know, you're looking to not have Jamari Thrash next season. Uh, so you're looking to, you know, add to the wide receiver room. And you have to understand that there's probably going to be some uh, some numbers go anyway. Um, players look to transfer. Um, some players uh, go to the league early on, so on and so forth. So you could look at this situation and think, well, who knows, maybe one of the um, freshmen from last year, freshmen from this year, look for a change of scenery. With the transfer portal, things are very fluid. Uh, even so, if you return a lot, I still think that you're in a position where if you're Jeff Brom and company, you're probably looking to take at least two to three receivers in this class. So I think that um, for the future, because in 2024, Mario Huggins-Bruce is going to be a senior, and then you're going to have um, you know, Kevin Coleman Jr. as a true junior, uh, Jimmy Callaway and Jaden Thompson are going to be veterans, assuming that they're there in 2024. So there's a lot of hypotheticals that the Cardinals, um, this makes sense that they're going after a ton of receivers in this class. I'm not necessarily sure of how many they're going to take, but I think that this is going to be a position that's going to be prioritized because you have to continue to, uh, despite everything being good right now, you still have to, you know, um, you know, 
replenish the depth for the upcoming season. So I think that this is going to be a very interesting recruitment. Um, top 10, obviously, re the recruitment's still open for Louisville. It's a matter of possibly getting both of these, Alex Taylor and Terrell Anderson, uh, on campus, maybe at the same time, maybe trying to pitch a package deal. Who knows? Uh, but both are pretty decently high on Louisville, so that's something to focus on. So that's going to conclude the – Football talk of the show. We're going to transition over into basketball, where the Cardinals um, barely lost on the road to a ranked Miami team. 19 ranked Hurricanes defeated the Cardinals 93 to 85. We'll talk about that effort from the Cardinals here in just a second as we talk about our friends and the title sponsor of the show, LinkedIn Jobs. As a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023. All depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve those goals. It helps you quickly to attract qualified candidates to open jobs with targeting tools. They go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post company and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of. Um... LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash college. That's LinkedIn.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Hey, Cardinal fans. Thanks again for making Locked On Louisville your first listen every day. Do yourself a favor. Make Locked On College Basketball, our new podcast, your second listen. Everything you need to know about college basketball all in one place, plus hear from big-name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, moving right on along. Speaking of college basketball, the Cardinals looking to try to create some magic down in South Florida on Saturday evening. Very close, but unfortunately, we're not able to come out on top. Fell to the 19th ranked Miami Hurricanes, 93 to 85 down in Coral Gables, falling to three and I believe 22 on the season. They are now one and 13 in conference play. Georgia Tech getting a victory recently. Louisville is back to being the worst team in the ACC. Um, but the first go around, when they played the Hurricanes at the Yum Center, got absolutely blown out, eighty to fifty-three. This time around, coming off of a big victory, or I'm sorry, a big loss, a big deficit loss to Pittsburgh, Louisville started out pretty, pretty rough against Miami. They went down 10-0 early on. It had all the makings of another game where you're thinking. Okay, here we go again. This is going to be another you know 20 point game or so. But Louisville fought their way back almost immediately. They had a lead in the first half at one point, and uh, for some point in time, you're wondering, is this an instance to where the Cardinals can try to come back and uh, do the unthinkable? Well, Louisville ended up going. Uh, down by double digits in the second half. They didn't get a lead in the second half. Um, cut the deficit, I think, to... I think five was the closest that they cut it, if I'm not mistaken. No, four was the closest that they had cut it. They cut it 74-70 to 70, um, when L. Ellis made a pair of free throws with just under five minutes to go, but the Cardinals were just not able to um, really... You know, cut the deficit any further. Miami, let's face it, Miami is a very, very good team. They're twenty and five now, eleven and four in conference play. They are um, essentially sitting at you know second in sole position um, in the uh, ACC standings. But I thought that this was um, a performance from the Cardinals that was probably one of their best performances of the season. I will say this, does it mean that much considering that they lost? I'm not going to put a lot of significance into this performance because there still are um, you know, areas of improvement. Obviously, defense was not that good. You gave up 93 points. So offensively, I think your team looked a lot better, but defensively, not good at all when you're giving up 93 points. Um, I understand that Miami shot over double free throws that you shot. Um, 27 free throws. They made 23 of them. Louisville was only 9 of 11 from the free throw line. Um, but still, I think that the Cardinals played extremely well offensively. It led 
by L. Ellis. L. Ellis had a game high 33 points, um, 12 of 20 from the field, three of eight from the three point line, six of six from the free throw line to go along with five assists. I will say this L. Ellis gets a lot of criticism. I think a lot of you know him forcing the issue, maybe turning the ball over and you know having some bad shot selection at times really kind of falls towards him being used way too much, having way too much responsibility scoring the basketball. You know, he is the number one scoring option on this team, and he's the pretty much the only consistent scoring option on this team outside of maybe Mike James and now maybe Kamari Lance. Um, Jalen Withers with another solid performance had 18 points to go on with five rebounds. He was seven of 10 from the field. Mike James had nine Kamari lands in double figures. Again, five of seven from the field, 13 points. Um, Emmanuel Accor four had four points, three rebounds off the bench. Sidney Curry only played 11 minutes. Um, you know, had two points. JJ trainer had six points. Um, so the Cardinals, Offensively speaking, um, it, it was a pretty solid day offensively. I mean, they shot 58% from the field, 44% making 10 threes from behind the arc, 82% from the free throw line. You look at those numbers and you're probably thinking, you score 85 points, you're probably winning a college basketball game. But unfortunately, the defense was just almost non-existent for Louisville. Uh, transition defense at times, uh, that's continued to be an issue. Um, but give credit to Miami because they also made some tough shots, especially in that first half. I mean, they shot 53% from the field. They shot 40% from behind the arc. They shot 85% from the free throw line while making 23 free throws. And in a game with the, the deficit is only eight points, that definitely makes a difference. Uh, Miami out-rebounded global by four, um, only turned the ball over six times. The Cardinals turned the ball over 12 times to go with uh, 12 assists. So not the greatest assist to turnover ratio, but definitely better than what we're used to seeing for the Cardinals. So um, ultimately, look, I think that I don't want to look too much into this um, performance because what I don't want to go out and say is, OK, Louisville won the game or Louisville lost the game, but they had one of their better performances of the, of the season. So we're getting better. We'll see, because. As decent as the team looked against Florida State, they turned around and lost by nearly 30 points to Pittsburgh. You looked okay against Miami. You looked solid offensively, bad defensively, but now you're turning around and you have to play Virginia. So what are we going to see from the Cardinals on Wednesday? What's going to happen? Um, I think I have to see a consistent level of production like this offensively before I'm in any spot to say, well, we're starting to see improvement because the main issue this season is that lack of consistency. I liked what I saw offensively. I liked the fight that I saw from the team on Saturday evening. I liked that this team went down 10-0 and said, you know what? No, we're going to fight back. They even took the lead at one point. They played a very good Miami team. So I'm not going to sit here and say, well, it doesn't matter because they lost to Miami. Miami's a very, very good team. Nigel Pack, um, you know, Isaiah Wong. Isaiah Wong is one of the most underrated players in the country. They have a very, very good coach. Um, they have a very, very solid support staff as well, or supporting cast, I should say, uh, down in Coral Gables. But this was a situation to where we saw it's so difficult for this team to have an overall good performance because as good as the offense was, the defense was maybe worse than the offense was good, if that makes sense. I know that that's kind of a little confusing to grasp, but I think it's the truth. When you give up 93 points and you lose, or you, you score 85 and you lose by nine, I mean, this is the, let's see, this is the third straight game where the Cardinals have given up at least 81 points. The second straight to where they've given up over 90 points. So defensively speaking, it might have been their best performance of the season offensively, but you're not going to win games when you're giving up consistently 80 points, 80 points, 90 points, 90 points. You're giving up back-to-back 90-point -back games. That's not good enough. That's unacceptable. It has to be better. Um, they have to be better rebounding the basketball, which they have been you know, more so in ACC play than earlier on in the year. You have to be better defending on-ball screens. You have to be better you know, getting back transition defense. Teams are killing Louisville in transition, and you're seeing the frustration on Kenny Payne's face when Louisville's not getting back in transition. So, you know, shout out to L. Ellis, Kamari Lands, 
um, and Jalen Weathers offensively, but defensively um, too much to be desired, and the Cardinals lost accordingly on the road in Coral Gables. So moving right on along into the final segment of the show, we'll kind of uh, switch gears a little bit, go to the NBA, where former Cardinal star Jordan Awara is on the move to just up I-65. He's playing with the Pacers now. We'll talk about um, what it's going to look like for him in a Pacers uniform here in just a second after we talk about our friends over at Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all of the fat and calories, you have to try a, a Built Bar. We've got you through the holidays, or we just got through the holidays, and I know my goal has been to eat a little healthier, but I haven't really wanted to comprise that candy bar taste. But with Built Bar, they're covered in 100% real chocolate, and they have all of the healthy benefits of a protein bar, so you're getting the best of both worlds. And they have a wide variety of flavors from churro, peanut, br- peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. Um, I-, I know that mainly over the past, you've had to get them online at Built.com, but now... Amazing opportunity you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section. Grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. And if you're a Sam's Club person, there's no issue. Run in, grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter, and churro. You can thank me later. Okay, final segment of the show. We're into the NBA Former Cardinal star Jordan Nwora got traded from the Milwaukee Bucks to the Indiana Pacers in a three-team deal between the Bucks, the Brooklyn Nets, and the uh, Indiana Pacers. George Hill, Serge Ibaka, and a couple of second-round draft picks on their way to Indiana as well. Serge Ibaka has since been waived. But Jordan Nwora um, kind of fits what Indiana is looking to do. I think that this makes sense for both players. Um, really for Jordan Wara because this offers uh, more of a possible um, this offers more of a possible um, you know opportunity to play in a, a situation that you know allows you to get more time um, in 2022-23 he's you know he's played in 38 games. Um, obviously hadn't played much since, but he's averaging 15.7 minutes per game. That's just around three less than how many he played last year. He's, um, you know, seen a little bit of a step back in points per game, um, you know, a step back in, in rebounds per game as well. Um, but I think that that can kind of be contributed to the, um, you know, you know, kind of deduction in minutes. NBA champion Jordan Wara, I might say, I think that this makes a lot of sense. You're playing uh, – now, now, granted, I think that it, it makes a lot of sense playing you know, alongside Giannis Antetokounmpo, uh, Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton because, you know, there's not a lot of emphasis on, you know, guarding Nwora uh, as much as it is trying to stop Giannis from scoring 50 points and getting a triple-double on any given evening. But I digress. So, um, you know, being a spot-up shooter, I think that this might allow him to be more of a creator in Indiana because they're in more of a rebuild and it's kind of uh, open to – what he's going to be doing. Uh, I would assume that he's going to be playing more of the four um, with the Pacers, but, you know, there's a possibility to maybe carving out some, um, you know, possible, you know, starting level minutes. Um, Aaron Nesmith was traded from from Boston. He's been the starting power forward for the Pacers this year. He's averaging about 10 and four. Um, so, I think that um, you know, it's not impossible for you know Nora to overtake Nesmith as the starting power forward. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I mean it's possible. Uh, but you have a solid distributor in Tyrese Halliburton. I think for Indianapolis, this makes sense. Really, really makes sense because you are, you know, getting rid of some contracts. You're taking a chance on a um, a possible, you know low risk medium return because he's making 3 million this season and next season. Um he's been a guy that's shown you that he can shoot the ball extremely well. You know, he's uh you know this past season just under 40% from the three point line, you know, 39% from the field, which needs to get better, but uh 86% from behind uh from from the free throw line. Sorry, I cannot speak today. Um so I think that you know you're going to be using him as an offensive um uh, surge off the bench. I think that this makes a lot of sense for the Pacers because, you know, you have your starting backcourt for the future, Tyrese Halliburton and Ben Matherin. Um, You know, you have Chris Duarte, Andrew Nimhar, Buddy Heald, um, so on and so forth, kind of at the two and the three 
um, and then Miles Turner, um, you know, as a center. And granted, you know, uh, Goga Batadza from uh, the international ranks, Indiana had a lot of kind of a log jam in the front court at the center position. So getting rid of him and adding more of a stretch for um, a guy that can, um, you know, beatalize in the catch and shoot alongside of Ben Matherin and uh, Tyrese Halliburton as your main uh, playmakers. So I'm interested to see how he's utilized uh, by the Pacers. But I like this move for both parties. For um, Nora, it's a possibility to carve out an even bigger role, especially in you know the scoring responsibilities. And for the Pacers, it really makes sense because you're adding another young prospect um, that can – you know, possibly continue to grow um, with the remainder of this um, core that is looking to try to rebuild the next era of Indiana basketball. So I like this move for New Orleans, and we wish him the best of best of luck. Sorry, in Indianapolis. So that's going to wrap up today's episode of the show. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you right back here very 